let's start with Ritesh and Farhan. What was the genesis uh, of this series? And let's start with that, and then we'll go with the creators. I think the question reached Ritesh before it reached me, so he can start. <laughs> Hi. Uh, good evening. So I think um, the genesis has to be what it is, is the story, which came from Mr. Hussain Zaidi. And um, I think um, it's uh, it's a genre which I think I'm, we, most of us are suckers for. You love this crime genre, and I think it's very popular as well. I think based on the material which was so potent is what I think all of us uh, immediately you know reacted to. And um, the interesting part of it is that it's set against the backdrop of when India got its freedom. So it's in the backdrop of the free nation and what that freedom meant for the underworld. So it also meant freedom for them to do what they wanted to. And so it just talks about the birth of the underworld and gives you an insight into that era. Farhan? Um, you know, the thing is, when we first uh, heard that uh, Hussein wanted to share something with us, um, Instinctively, I felt that it's going to be, okay, it's going to be another, you know, cop versus gangster kind of story. There'll be uh, action, there'll be all that stuff. Um, but given the fact that uh, he knows so much in terms of the, the three decades of reporting that he's done, written books about it, uh, there was this hope that there will be some X factor in that story when it comes to us. And uh, as you've seen now in the first two episodes, uh, this family unit that he's taken and created all this drama that really, really engages you beyond just, you know, the, the bad guys versus the good guys kind of thing. It really, like, um, it stays with you. It's a, it's an emotional journey. You feel what the characters are feeling. And that was very, very exciting uh, to see when it came to us as a story. And for those who don't know, Hussein Zaidi is, uh, is one of, uh, was one of Bombay's, um, Bombay and now Mumbai's most foremost uh, crime reporters, as Farhan said, reporting on the scene for more than 30 years. And since then, he's written lots of books chronicling uh, what happened during those years. And uh, again, with Farhan and Ritesh, uh, how and when uh, did Renzel and Shujat come on board? Um, I think it, it was immediately after we you know, had that first narration where Kasim also was there and you know then that's how it starts the process like sometimes you get material which is comes attached with the creators the uh, director as well but i think this one was purely with mr zaidi who came in because of like i said his research and his entire um, uh, goodwill which he had generated as a journalist over that period and i think that's how then uh, we worked with sujat earlier on rock on so it was and i knew you know like um, his sensibilities in terms of what he would do with something like this. We got him on board and then Renzel and that's how the writer's room opened up. And uh, Renzel and Shujat, now obviously this is a fiction series, but there are many parallels to uh, real life in, in the series. So what were the sensitivities in adapting this for, uh, for you know, streaming and for the modern generation many of whom don't know what the, uh, the history was back at that time. Uh, yeah, I think the genesis of this, of course, came from uh, Hussein Zaidi, and uh, we all know uh, his uh, repertoire of uh, you know, books published and his career as a crime journalist over three decades. Uh, the universe uh, will, uh, will feel the same, right? Uh, because it is a part of uh, the recent past. And uh, it does chronicle uh, the birth of organized crime uh, in the city of uh, Bombay from the 60s onwards. So yes, there will be some familiar territory that will come in. Uh, I think uh, uh, Hussein uh, purely as a, as a writer has uh, so many more stories to tell. And uh, this story really went beyond most of the books uh, that he's written and uh, are published because there is so much material that is there. Uh, and as Farhan said, you know, for us, what really uh, got us uh, going was uh, the emotional anchoring of the narrative, which was about the family and juxtaposing it with the growth of, uh, you know, a new India, uh, a new city with the good, the bad as well comes in. And uh, that is how we draw, uh, drew parallels with the family and uh, with the city. Uh, yeah, it's a love letter to uh, Bombay. It's an ode uh, to Bombay. And uh, at the same time, it does trace back uh, the history 
of it and purely coming from the reportage world. So yes, the universe will feel uh, similar, but I think the story is about uh, a family and their trials and tribulations, and we all are some of the choices we make, and as we saw uh, by the end of you know episode two, the choice that Ismail Khatri made, and now you will see the repercussions of what happens henceforth. Renzil? Yeah, I think um, he gave us a great, I think Hussein gave us a great platform from where we could, you know, spring forward. Uh, but I personally maintain, and uh, I think this is true of all storytelling, if you don't have the great, you know, the right characters to root for, uh, or you, uh, you aren't invested in the emotions, you know, all the shootouts and all the car chases, and, uh, you know, that's, that, that's like the icing on the cake. So I think one of the big things, um, I think that really happened, and this has been my longest uh, in short time, writing assignment uh, uh, and with my writers in the writing room, Samir and Chaitanya, is to develop these, you know, these emotions and these characters so it's relatable. And more importantly, I think today with streaming, it has to be universal, you know. The universal question we'll come back to with James and Aparna in a few minutes. But uh, let's now open it up a little more and include uh, Ritesh, Farhan, Renzil, Shujat, and Aparna, and ask you what were the challenges of recreating, you know, 1960s, uh, 70s, and a uh, bit of the 80s uh, in uh, in modern times because the city has changed uh, so much. Yeah, uh, Mum uh, present day Mumbai is uh, uh, is a tough place to shoot. Uh, it's, it's, it's a tough place to shoot anyways, especially, uh, I mean, period, there's no chance with the kind of development and the progress the city has made. So uh, we uh, put up a mammoth set and uh, uh, this entire show was uh, really born out of troubled times because we had to battle two deadly waves of uh, COVID. Uh, the set had to be broken and... Uh, built, reconstructed twice over from scratch. And if that wasn't uh, enough, we were hit by a cyclone as well. Uh, yeah, and I thought I was lucky. Uh, so yes, uh, a lot went into it, physically, uh, mentally challenging for the entire uh, crew. Uh, but it's not possible uh, to do it without, uh, you know, the grit and uh, determination uh, of a collaborative team, uh, whether it's the cast who had to keep on coming back after you know such long breaks to uh, get back into the skin of the characters, or my entire crew uh, reconstructing the set, my production designer, because uh, years went in terms of the research and the intricate detailing of constructing uh, the set. Uh, my uh, director of photography, John Smith, who did a terrific job referencing in terms of the lighting of uh, those eras. We had to keep on upgrading the set from 60s to 70s and 80s. It spans over three decades. Yeah, it was exhausting, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, Renzel? Yeah, I think Sujat put it well, and he was quite comprehensive. With, um, I, I just feel that, you know, we are, We've had, uh, Shujat and I used to text each other every night through the, uh, especially through COVID. Uh, so I'm kind of pinching myself to, you know, it's kind of surreal to actually be here in front of all of you that, you know, presenting this uh, for such a long time. Uh, you know, we were living day uh, day by day, just, you know, trying to figure, figure out how to do the scene for the next day. Um, yeah, so it, it's been a labor of love and, uh, a pretty long one at that, so I think I'm thrilled. Uh, Renzel was a, a, a cute young boy when I met him first. <laughs> uh, but of course, uh, I would also like to mention, uh, you know, Ritesh, uh, Farhan, and Kasim, uh, my producers, uh, who stood behind me, not like rocks, but mountains. Uh, the entire Amazon team, especially uh, Aparna, who uh, was really, I mean, uh, the backbone, uh, you know, uh, believing in us and having that faith, which is really important to keep on, you know, pushing ahead. It's, it becomes really uh, uh, something that you kind of keep on depending uh, back on. And uh, I must say, we had all the backing in the world to do this. So, Aparna, uh, what uh, was the catalyst in you deciding to keep the uh, set standing 
in the middle of uh, two waves of COVID and a cyclone? This project is really a labor of love. It's just incredible passion that, uh, you know, everyone brought to the table. Um, lockdowns were understandable. You know, the whole world was uh, battling it. But when the cyclone hit our sets and, you know, it was destroyed, it, you know, it really shook all of us. I remember speaking to Shujat and he said we'd make it. Uh, I think it's this resilience, this passion, this sense of ownership, this belief is what sort of kept us going for it. Uh, we truly believe uh, in this show, as you can see. Yeah. <laughs> and coming to the cast, uh, Kritika and Avinash, amazing uh, performances. And you haven't seen most of it because they really come into their own in, from episode four onwards. Yeah. And, uh, and it's an absolute treat to watch them. So uh, let's start with what was the brief given to both of you uh, by the creators? Do not act like it's a period drama. <laughs> Do not act like you belong in that period. To keep it very real, be very authentic. Uh, a lot of attention to detail, everything, the way we speak, the dialect, you see the sets, you see the costumes all of this, there was so much done in, in terms of the physical world around us that, uh, and then to have brilliant actors like uh, KK and Nivedita, Abu and Amir, I really miss them right now, especially after watching these two. Um, it was just, it was made absolutely, like, it was made really easy for, for us. Avinash? Considering it was four years back, uh, I don't have much memory, but what I do remember is, uh, I remember auditioning for it, I tested for the part, and uh, for some reason believed that this was mine. Uh, and then there was nine months of silence from my director's side, because he was flirting with other actors. Uh, and then eventually, it kind of came to me. I remember getting a call, I met him, and we just spoke about everything else but the show. Uh, he gave me the script to read, and uh, I remember just, uh, shaving my moustache. I, I kind of uh, made that moustache and sent him a picture. Uh, next thing I know, he sent me clothes that I'm supposed to wear and says, this is the life you're living now. Uh, there was not much conversation that happened about it. Uh, do you remember some? I, I, no, yeah, yeah. We, we didn't speak much. Uh, and all I can say is that there was immense amount of faith that he invested. And all I can hope is I have given it back to him. Uh, that's my hope, but here we are today uh, with our with our show and having a global premiere. And uh, in terms of uh, prep, uh, what did both of you have to do? I'm particularly interested in body language because getting a body language of the, a particular period is, you know, quite something uh, for an actor. So, uh, what did Renzel and Shujat tell you? Did they put you through boot camp? Uh, walk us through it. I was the last one to join the cast, so I had a lot of catching up to do. But uh, Avinash and uh, my brothers and everybody else was really already in the skin of the characters. And uh, they spoke like these people and they really welcomed me um, very warmly. Um, I struggled with the body language a little bit because Habiba is not your typical girl uh, and very different from who I am and the dialect as well. I'm not a Mumbai girl, so, uh, and also this is 60s, uh, 70s for me in the show. So just to get the dialect right, to get the body language right, it was uh, both those things. I think all credit goes to Shujat sir, firstly, and then Renzel and our uh, dialogue writers, Hussein and Abbas, who really helped me perfect every line so I looked like I belonged to this world. Avinash? Well, uh, there's still pockets of Mumbai uh, where you will find people talk like uh, the way we are talking here. Um, so yes, uh, individually I would walk around and try and talk to these people and have some kind of sense from them. Uh, but beyond that, we, we, we actually had workshops. Uh, we, we did a lot of reading for the script. After that, we, we had a workshop for almost 10, 15 days, if I'm not wrong. Body language, uh, and we would, we would actually break down scenes together. All the actors get, would get together. In fact, the beauty was it, it was one of those rare project, uh, projects where you, you felt that all the actors wanted to come together. 
do multiple readings on their own and, and share their own research about what they were finding. Uh, this was one experience that, that I think I would take to, to my grave because um, this kind of integrity and intensity from everyone involved is very, very rare. And I'm really blessed to be part of this show. And moving on to the streamer, uh, so uh, James and Aparna, uh, 2023 alone has been a stellar year for Prime Video, uh, starting with The Hard which premiered at Berlin, and there's been Made in Heaven. Uh, 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 yes, uh, and uh, Made in Heaven season two, and uh, there's Jubilee, and uh, Modern Love, Chennai, uh, Farzi, <laughs> so so many. So um, my first question is, uh, successive country heads of uh, Amazon India have talked about doubling down on investment in the territory. Is that going to continue? Is that plan in place? Um, well, first of all, thank you. It has been a great year, I think. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, not only in India, but around the world. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, the stuff in India stands, you know, above the rest, I think. Uh, those, those titles you all mentioned, they're just incredible um, in terms of their quality, the number of customers they reached, uh, and their popularity around the world. So uh, there's certainly no plans of stopping what we're doing. Um, it's, um, I think we've announced before that there's a few countries in the world, actually there's a lot now, where uh, you know most customers come into Prime Video, come into Prime through Prime Video, and India is one of those. So that means, you know, when you think about how incredible that is, you know, in a, in a place like the UK, most people associate uh, Prime with retail, and then video is kind of this added benefit. In India, it's actually mostly the opposite, where people are like so enamored with the the content on Prime Video that they come in and they're like, oh, maybe I'll do some shopping. That's like the secondary thing. And, and that's not an exaggeration. It's, it's, really a, it's really a testament to Aparna and the partners like Excel that we've worked with these last, it's almost 10 years now for Han and Ritesh since, uh, since we met and started down this path. So it's, it's incredible. Um, so, uh, and then to the, yeah, and I, I think I answered your other question too. Yeah, no, no plans on, on stopping what we're doing, expanding into new areas. Uh, you know, ad supported content, uh, just really trying to deliver whatever we can for customers. Um, keep it going. Aparna? He said it. <laughs> we'll continue to. We have a massive slate in development at the moment. We are developing a lot of shows. Uh, we've already put out so many shows this year, many, many more to come. Um, and uh, continue to serve our diverse audiences across the length and breadth of the country. Now, specifically, Bombay Meri Jaan uh, is being uh, released in a number of Indian languages and 30 international languages. So is this uh, Prime Video India's uh, quest for breakout glory? All of our originals launch in uh, you know, 240 countries and territories. Uh, and we localize our shows. Farzi this year uh, was amongst the top shows uh, you know, from across the world. Um, but we truly believe that a show like this, which is so intensely local, rooted, authentic, uh, you know, and at the heart of it, uh, very, very emotional, uh, a genre that anyway cuts across all demos, uh, you know, transcends all barriers of language and nationality, uh, will resonate with audiences, not just in India, but across the world. And um, taking a step back and looking at uh, the broader Asia picture, uh, your remit, Aparna, your remit, uh, you know, includes Southeast Asia as well. And uh, uh, James, obviously, you're the head of international. So uh, what can you tell us about further plans for the region going forward? Why don't you talk, why don't you talk about Southeast Asia? Um, <clears throat> Our uh, philosophy remains the same, you know, it's always customer backwards and Southeast Asia is not one homogeneous whole, you know, every country, Philippines is so different from Indonesia, so different from Thailand. So really, uh, you know, producing content that is rooted in those territories. The interesting thing is that we have local boots on the ground to understand the cultural nuances, the specificities. Uh, and uh, uh, developing a lot of shows. So in <coughs> coming uh, months and years, you'll see a lot coming out. We just put out two uh, originals uh, in Southeast Asia, uh, LOL. 
uh, Thailand and uh, Philippines. James. Um, I think, uh, you know, when we started, uh, you know, India was one of the first couple countries after the U.S. where we started adding content. And so when you think about on a global scale, you know, we've got uh, colleagues in the U.S. who make or aren't making at the moment because of the strike, but who make these great big global shows and films which go out around the world. And then we started in uh, Japan and India were actually the first two places where we started saying, you know what, we need content from Japan to make sure we have a good service for Japanese customers. Uh, we need a good content coming out of India. Uh, but now, uh, you know, all these years later, we're really starting it all to kind of fit together. So as Aparna is building out the slate in Southeast Asia, you know what, they're already loving the stuff that's coming in from India, the stuff that's coming in from Japan, the stuff that's coming in from the UK. Uh, last year, we also started expanding into Africa. So we hired teams in Nigeria and South Africa. So those teams also watch a lot of content from India, from the UK. And now that we're adding Nigerian content, Nigerian content is traveling back to the UK and to the US. So they're all starting to feed on each other. And it's not like... Uh, anybody is standing on their own. So uh, it's super exciting. We had all the leaders from around the world. We all got together in Singapore actually a couple weeks ago. And uh, it's just wonderful to see the content now coming from everywhere and everybody putting into this pot of uh, what's the best you got from around the world. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a really wonderful time. So this is my cue to ask Farhan to sing a song. Uh, uh, but he probably won't. But if you will. <laughs> Um, this is a surprise, <laughs> but uh, I'll, I'll actually say no, <laughs> or maybe I'll sing it, no. <laughs> oh, well, it's, it's your loss. So on that note, thank you everyone for being here. Thank you, the creative team, thank and thank you for thank a you wonderful guys. show. Thank and you. sorry it's been thank very hot, I know, but thank you for being here.